Exactly one week after the shoot down of Malaysia Airlines Flight 17 and the scare over the air of Israel, the UN now issuing maybe a much wider warning. Welcome everybody, I'm Neil Cavuto and the FAA lifting its travel ban on flights to Israel. Maybe it's because of this guy, former New York City Mayor Michael Bloomberg, who told me yesterday when we cower and fear the terrorists win, now where the U.N. is getting involved on something much bigger. It reportedly wants any country where hostilities are flaring up to issue detailed alerts to flyers. To Pentagon spokesman J.D. Gordon on that delicate balance between overreacting and keeping the flying public safe. What is this about and what do you make of what the U.N. is trying to do? Hi, right, Neil. Thanks for having me on the show. Well, it's a delicate balance. I think there's got to be a balance between uh, protecting passenger safety and also cost savings. So I think that uh, Malaysia Airlines clearly failed that test. Uh, anybody that was paying attention would have known that uh, several Ukrainian military aircraft were shot down in that same vicinity. So basically, Malaysia Airlines uh, uh, went through the OK Corral during a gunfight. So I think the U.N. saw that and they figured they have to take some action, too, because this is only going to get worse, Neil, because there is a great proliferation of these type of uh, weapons. And uh, uh, the conflict zones are widening as well. So I think this is going to get worse before it gets better. And I think uh, the FAA and counterparts internationally and the airlines have to take this more seriously. You know, um, on the surface, I can't believe I'm saying this. I have no problem with the U.N. sort of trying to weigh various regions and their hostilities. I think there are 37 or 38 of them uh, that, that have pretty violent conflicts going on right now. And up until a week ago, uh, most people were just paying attention to where they were flying to, not what they were flying over. Uh, how could this get sticky, what the U.N. wants to do? Well, I think if uh, there are certain type of regulations that co countries aren't comfortable with, every country and every airline, uh, they have their own rules, their own policies that they follow. But I think that uh, one of the key issues to understand here, too, in addition to these uh, type of uh, anti-aircraft weapons that were used in eastern Ukraine, about 50 countries have those. But an even greater threat, in my opinion, Neil, are these man pads. There are tens of thousands of these uh, shoulder-held uh, anti-aircraft weapons out there. For instance, uh, from Libya, when Gaddafi was toppled, about 15,000 of those man pads were loose. So uh, they made them what their, is their way down altitude to... altitude capability, their range? The argument has always been that they can't get up to 32, 33,000 feet. Uh, only sophisticated anti-missile systems or missile systems like those that were used in Ukraine can. That's right. Uh, their uh, altitude is about three miles, so they can get aircraft when uh -huh. they're taking off or landing. So it's about half the cruising altitude. But uh, those missiles found their way to Mali, to Nigeria, even to Iraq. ISIS has them in Iraq and Syria. And even when uh, bin Laden's driver, Salim Hamdan, was arrested in Afghanistan in 2001, he had two SA-7 missiles in the trunk of his car. So I think uh, we have to be very careful about those, including in the United States. Basically, any terrorist could stand uh, at the edge of a runway and fire one of these things at any commercial airline taking off or landing. Scary stuff. J.D., good seeing you again. Thank you very, very much. And now to some uh, alarming Thanks, news yeah. that comes out. In fact, it continues to come out of the Ukraine. Reports that these thieves that were cashing in on credit cards, cell phones, looted from the crash site, using those victims' credit cards as we speak to Trace Gallagher. More on that. Trace. And sadly, Neil, this wasn't just a few isolated cases. Journalists on the ground say that virtually every suitcase, every bag, every purse has been opened up and rummaged through. These so-called death hunters are going through these belongings looking for jewelry and cash and, as you said, credit cards. The Ukrainian government has now recommended that the families of the victims either freeze or change their credit card accounts altogether so they don't lose assets. Listen now to the Ukraine prime minister. Against all rules of a studious investigation, there are people who are fooling around amongst the debris with personal and recognizable items of the victims. This is utterly disgusting. Uh, apologies, the Dutch Prime Minister, the Dutch Banking Association says the next of kin would be compensated for any damages resulting from credit card theft. 193 of the 298 people on board were Dutch. Now, it's unclear if passengers from other countries would also have their accounts protected. Criminals are also using victims' IDs to set up phony Facebook pages. Those pages promise to take you to show you video of the actual crash happening instead. They direct you to some suspicious sites that sell questionable goods or ask for donations. Experts say, Neil, as horrifying as this practice is, it's very common and it can be quite lucrative. Neil. Well, creepy, creepy, creepy. Trace, thank you very, very much.